Hello, everybody. So now we're going to work on a more difficult problem. Now, this is going to be involving a lot of the different properties, actually all four of the properties that we went over in the first video. So this will involve uh, re-indexing, it'll involve splitting them up into different parts, it'll involve uh, a lot of different things. So um, right here, we have a situation where we have a summation from 1 to 100, 1 1.2 raised to i plus 1, and then minus 1.2 raised to the i. So what we're going to need to do in here is we're going to need to find a way to break these up in such a way where we can, we can cancel out some things to, to simplify this. Because if you were to try and solve this by hand, you would have to plug in 1 into here, then 2, and then all the way up to 100. That would take you a really, really long time. So here we're going to try and simplify that, make your life a little bit easier. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this up into two separate summations so that we can deal with this guy and this guy separately. So to do that, we'll just do i equals 1 to 100 of 1.2 i plus 1 minus, because we have a minus right there, i equals 1 to 100, 1.2 raised to the i. Now, we know that we can try and find a way to cancel things out, because the summation from 1 to 100 of 1.2 raised to something is going to be similar to the summation of 1 to 100 of 1.2 raised to the i, right? So, there is some portion between this summation and this summation where they overlap. So, this summation has parts that overlaps with this part, and since this is a minus, we know that there's going to be some portion between here and here where we can just cancel out. And that'll make a lot of things easier. So let's, we have to first identify where they can cancel out. And in order to do that, we need to make this, uh, this number look exactly like this number. So we identify that right here we're putting a plus 1 on top of the variable. And here it doesn't have it. So clearly, in order to make this look like this, we need to subtract 1 from this guy up here. So if we subtract 1 here to the variable, that means we have to add 1 here to the index. So let's go ahead and try that. So now instead of i equals 1, it's i equals 2 to 101. We add 1 to both. And so since we added here 1.2 raised to the i plus 1, well, since we added 1 here, we can subtract 1 from the variable here. And now you can see where the 1s will cancel out here. And so this side remains the same. Okay, so simplifying this, we get uh, i equals 2, number 1, raised to the i, minus i equals 1 to the 100, 1.2 raised to the i. So now here, it might become a little bit more obvious. We can see from here and here that the portion where this side overlaps with this side is between the range 2 to 100. So 2 to 100 here is identical to 2 to 100 here, that portion only. The rest is what remains. So what we can do is we can break this one up into two separate summations and this one up into two separate summations. So I'm going to go up to here to make it a little bit easier. So again, I'm breaking this one up into two separate summations. So I identify that uh, we have uh, i equals 101. 101. I'll explain how that happened. Plus summation i equals 2 to 100. 1.2 raised to the i. So all I did was I identified that this portion right here is going 2 to 101. Well, we know that they overlap from 2 to 100. So I just broke it up. I took the 101 off of this range and put it right here. And then I le I'm left with the 2 to 100 range right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that whole thing in brackets. And this, again, represents only this left side. So let's deal with the right side. So we have a minus sign in between, and I'm going to put another bracket right here. So we have uh, i equals... So now there's a 1 right here, which is not part of the portion that overlaps. So we'll have a 1 to 1 right there. 0.2 raised to the i plus, and then the rest of it. So we only took care of the 1, we still have 2 to 100 remaining. So we'll put the rest right here, 2 to 100, 1.2 raised to the i. So this, these two summations together are the same as this summation right here. So now we can see more clearly, this side right here, this summation right here, is the same as this summation right here. 
And if we were to distribute this minus sign through, we would, this plus sign would become a negative. So this minus this is zero because they're identical. So now we're left with this minus this. So let's go ahead and write that. So now we took something that had a whole bunch of numbers in between 1 to 100 and just brought it down to two numbers right here. So all we need to do on this summation is plug in 101 because it goes 101 to 101. And all we need to do on this summation is plug in 1 because it goes 1 to 1. So what this would be is the same thing as 1.2 raised to the 101 minus 1.2 raised to the 1. And then using my super calculator, we know that this right here is equal to 9938159. Now I'm going to go out to two decimal places here, 4 point, or 0 0.42. Yeah, there we go. So that's what this is. And then obviously 1.2 raised to the 1 is 1 1.2. So to solve this, finally you get 9938156. Point two two uh, two three rather. So there you go. We took something that was initially pretty complicated in terms of how you solve it, broke it down, identified overlapping parts, canceled out right here, and then we were left with something much simpler to solve. So this right here, this this line right here, is identical to this line right here. So this is just a simpler way of looking at this, and now it's easier to solve. So, for <laughs> anyone that enjoyed doing that much work, can like go do something else now, Facebook, whatever. If you want an easier way to do it, or visualize the easier way to do it, I got your back. So, the easier way to do it is honestly just to solve it. Am I going to write out all 100 terms? Hell no. But, if you start to do it and you, you can visualize what's happening, you can use logic and then a little bit of math to solve it out. So if we start to solve this by just doing 1.2 to the 1 plus 1, which is going to be 2, minus 1.2 to 1, we know that is going to have to be then added to the next term where we raise it i to the 2. So then we're going to have plus 1.2 to the 3 minus 1.2 to the 2. Now when you look at this, you can see that this positive 1.2 and this negative 1.2 are both raised to the second power, meaning these are going to cancel out here. So that's pretty convenient, so let's do the next one. So now we'll add our 1.2 to the fourth minus 1.2 to the third. Now, it's crazy, but it happened again. 1.2 to the third and a negative 1.2 to the third. These will again cancel. So let's do one more here. 1.2 to the fifth minus 1.2 to the fourth. Again, we're going to have them cancel. If we did this the whole way to 100, we know we're going to end up with 1.2 to the 100 plus 1, or 101, minus the only term left at the beginning, 1.2 to the 1. So if you want to do it that way and try and visualize it, you will come out with the same thing as, holy shit, all this to here. <laughs>